In this video, we're going to be creating a reusable button in React Native. React Native comes with a handful of basic components that are very easy to extend. This allows us to create reusable components throughout our applications that create a consistent styling so that we don't have to redefine them anywhere else. We're going to be creating a reusable button component from scratch so that you can see the actual process that you would go through when designing your own components. If you aren't sure how to create a new React Native project, visit the React Native website at facebook.github.io slash react-native and click on the Get Started button. And from here you can follow the quick start instructions and this will get you started with your own React Native application. Here I've opened up my app.js file that's created during the React Native installation process. And to get started, what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete all of this placeholder boilerplate text that was created during the installation process. And you should see it reflected here on my simulator once I save it. So we have a blank slate, and then this would be a great place for us to get started with building our button component. Now that I have the blank slate, I'm going to create a new directory for our components to live. To keep everything orderly, I'm going to store the rest of my components for my app in the components directory. So let's just call it components. And inside of the components directory, let's create a file called button.js. Inside of this button.js file is where all of the code for a button will live. So you can see it here on the left hand side and my app.js on the right hand side. Let's first start by importing React. Importing React will give us access to JSX templating. Next, let's bring in the base components that we'll need. So to get started, we'll need the text and style sheet components, as well as the touchable opacity. And this will be imported from React Native. Oops. React dash native. That'll give us a little bit more screen real estate to work with. There we go. For our button component, we're going to be using a stateless component since we don't need access to the disk keyword and we don't need to manage state. Let's start by creating a new constant called button. And this button will use a new ES6 bad arrow syntax and it will return a placeholder text component. And then at the bottom of our file, let's uh, export our named button component. Uh, now that we've created our button component, let's try importing it into our app file, our app.js file. Now that we've imported it, we can now make use of it. So if we just do button, and self-close it, we should see our text pop up here in the center. Yep, that's our placeholder text. Now we want to add some interactivity into our button. Back in our component, let's wrap the text component with the touchable opacity that we imported from React Native. So now if I click on it, we should see the a bit of opacity animation there. Now that we've wrapped our placeholder text with a touchable opacity, let's create a new styles object. And this will be a style sheet. And we'll call stylesheet.create and pass in a styles object. The first thing we'll need is a button body. And we'll give that a background color of 00AEEF. And then a width of 100%. and a padding of 20. And we'll align the items inside of the button to the center. And we'll justify the content vertically to the center as well. And the last thing we'll need is a border radius of eight. So the next thing we'll do is a button text, pass in another object of color, and we'll give that a color of white and a font size of 18 and a font weight of 600. And you have to put the 600 in quotes and then close this out with a semicolon. Now that we've created our styles, let's apply them to our button. So we can call this one style and this is styles.buttonbody. And then on here, style 
styles.button text and save that and that should refresh. Okay, great. Now we can see our button is displaying as we expected. It uh, looks like we need to give it a little bit of padding on the container in app.js. Let's do padding. I'll give this a 20 here. That should give us padding on the left and the right. Okay, now that we've added our style to our button tag, let's try adding some text inside of the button tag and see if that'll change anything. So let's call this uh, new text. And then I'll close out my button tag. So will this display our text? And it looks like it's not. So why is this not displaying our text? Well, because when you pass in uh, text like this or anything in between tags, this will become a property of children. So we can access this by passing in props as an argument to our button. And then we can replace this placeholder text with props.children and props.children. So now any text that we enter here will be rendered in properly using this props.children tag. Finally, let's add in some functionality into our button. So the first thing that we want to do is we'll create an on press event on our button. And we'll just say fat arrow, fat arrow, console.log button press. Sorry, the font is really big. I just made it big for the screencast, so it's going to hang over really easily. So let's open up our console through command D. And we'll de debug remote JS. I'll bring this over here. Oops. So I'll bring that over here and open up our console. And we'll see if the console log is working as expected. So let's press new text. And it looks like it's not. So just by calling an on press on our button, that doesn't actually do anything. So what we have to do is actually create an on press prop here on our touchable opacity. And this will just expect this will just accept the props dot on press property. So back in Chrome, I should be able to press it, and it'll say button pressed perfectly. Great. So now that we've created our new reusable button component, we could actually use this throughout our entire application anywhere that we want. And as you can imagine, this will apply to any other type of component that you want to create. So if you're still a bit confused. I highly recommend going through this again and trying to create your own custom components. Maybe try creating a, a text input or a label, and then you can try creating an entire form using your reusable components. Another exercise you could possibly try is by making this button component more customizable. Maybe allow it to accept a custom background color property or something like that. If you'd like to stay up with more React Native tutorials as well as web development and mobile development guides and tutorials, uh, then head over to statcast.com and sign up for our free weekly newsletter. This includes our free guides as well as our free and premium programming screencasts. If you like our channel and would like to see more videos like this, then hit that subscribe button down below so you can stay up to date with all of our future videos. Thanks for watching.